you know, for years we have looked at spinal cord injury or brain injury and said, end of story, uh, no further progress. No, that's no, longer tr that's no longer the rules. We need to find out how to do this stuff. We need to find out if we've got a chance of helping the nervous system heal itself. I'm one of over 5,000 New Zealanders with a spinal cord injury, one of the highest rates per capita in the Western world. New Zealand is about to start a controversial trial of stem cell treatment, taking cells from the participant's own nose and planting them in the injured spinal cord. The rules are changing and they're going to be rewritten in the next 10 years. I'm willing to be one of the first human guinea pigs out there. Like they're saying um, in Australia, we should, we should wait for Australia to do it and uh, wait 10 years and see what happens. Well, I'll be 60 by then, it'll be too late for me. I mean, this is my shot at it. Oh, definitely to be able to walk, absolutely. To be able to walk and climb upstairs and, you know, just, yeah, have a dance, exactly, absolutely. That's the dream. In Portugal and now New Zealand, scientists are taking the first steps towards making it a reality. A Portugal clinic offers stem cell transplantation as a treatment and claims some success. New Zealand is about to step onto the world stage with the first clinical trial of this procedure. Incredibly, the campaign all started with a Matamata grandmother, Nola Vallis. For 25 years, Nola has tenaciously raised funds and rallied the troops from her living room. So Nola, tell me about um, why did you start up the Spinal Cord Society? Well, because my husband was paralysed and I was determined to find a cure of spinal injury because he had a lot of pain. And I thought, right, I'll see if I can find a cure for spinal injury. And it's taken 25 years, but we've now got through ethics and we're ready to do some trials. Big call for a Madam Matter grandmother. But Noel has been the driving force behind getting research in New Zealand off the drawing board and into the lab. Money the Spinal Trust raised established a centre for research in Otago. Now Nola intends to find another two million, the cost of the two-year stem cell trial. My aim is to get this in the next two or three years into the medical world for everybody, so that if you broke your back again, or if you're an able-bodied person broke your back, you'd go into hospital and you'd be drip-fed some stem cells of your own stem cells, and within a few months you'd be back in the workforce, the same as a broken arm or a broken leg. Not quite that simple, but you have to admire her enthusiasm. This trial has been rejected twice by the Ethics Committee. I really feel the problem was that the Ethics Board straight away thought, because the majority of them are lay people, I think they thought, oh, well, this is fetal cells, embryonic cells, and as soon as you talk about stem cells, 98% of people think that. They don't realise that there's adult stem cells, which are your own cells, and that's what we're going to use, and they didn't understand that. And once we got it right, well, got our side of the story in that there are two types of stem cells, they've now taken a completely different attitude. Now the trial has the green light, it's over to the scientists. This is where it's all happening, at the Centre for Innovation. When I was here 18 months ago, the research team's proposal to begin human trials had been rejected by the Ethics Committee. Now they've got the green light, I'm keen to find out exactly what's involved and how it might affect thousands of Kiwis like me. The clinical research team will use olfactory cells, cells from the inside of the nose, and transplant them into the damaged spinal cord. These are the calcified nodules in the matrix that are is present around each of the cells. On These the olfactory cells surface. seem to have regenerative properties that can help to repair nerve cells and also encourage nerve cells to regrow and restore function. It's based on some studies done back in the 1990s looking at olfactory tissue. That's tissue up in the roof of the nose which provides a sense of smell. Now people have suddenly realised that this is a rather unusual part of the nervous system because we're constantly replacing the nerve cells there and those new nerve cells have to grow through the tissues uh, through the base of the uh, skull and up into the brain to establish meaningful connections. Part of the process is shown here in our footage of surgery being performed in Portugal. It was realised that there must be some very important guidance signalling mechanisms there to support that and when they looked they found a cell called the olfactory ensheathing cell. And it's that cell that a number of research studies 
shown, is able to help support the repair of injured spinal cord nerve cells. Professor Grant Gallette specialises in medical ethics, while Dr Jim Fade, a cellular biologist, leads the research team. One of the ethics committee's biggest concerns was safety for the participants and the danger of false expectations. Those two things have been addressed, I think, in two ways. First, by getting more safety evidence and responding to the specific points, for instance, about neuropathic pain that were raised in relation to safety. And secondly, making sure that uh, the information given to participants was uh, realistic in terms of the state of the art at the moment.